All right, for today's lesson, it is on Unit 8A, Lesson B, Day 1, Finding Slope. There are going to be two objectives for the day. One is finding slope from two points, and two, finding slope by using a table. Some key terms that you're going to be seeing throughout this section, um, and more than once, we have right here, slope equals the ratio of the, you're going to fill in here, vertical change, which is also known as the rise, to the horizontal change, also known as the run, between two points on the line. So, for example, right here we have m equals rise over run. Think of rise, the sun rises, it's going to be going up and down. And then your run is always going side to side. You're always going to be running back and forth. Okay, anytime you have a slope, it's always going to be a fraction in fraction form. Or a whole number, because we know that a whole number can always be over 1. Right here, take a highlighter, circle, star. This is going to be the slope formula. I want you to write now in big letters, write slope formula. I also want you to write, memorize me. Alright, obviously this is something important that you do need to know. So we have m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Now this y2 minus y1, again, that is the change in the vertical or our rise, and then our horizontal will be our x2 minus x1. Let's look down a little bit. When figuring out the slope, there's going to be four different types. Okay, you're either going to get a positive slope, a negative slope, a zero slope, or an undefined slope. Today we're just going to be labeling them, and tomorrow's now notes you'll be actually drawing in your slopes, and it'll be easier to identify the difference between those four. So we're going to move on to example one. It says find the slope of the line that passes through the given points. Here are your two coordinates. What I first want you to do is label both of them with their x and their y. So here's x, y, here's x, y. All right, now this is my first coordinate, so I'm going to label that as x1, y1. And this is my second one, so I'm going to label that as x2, y2. This is going to help me when I'm plugging these numbers back into this formula. So since this is my first time doing it, I want to rewrite my formula. So I know that m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Now I'm going to go ahead and look and I'm going to plug in my numbers. y2, I'm going to look for a y2 and it's right here. y2 is going to be 1. So I'm going to do 1 minus my y1, which is right here, take a look, which is 2. That's going to be my numerator. My denominator, I'm going to look for my x2, which is right here, it's my 4. And I'm going to subtract 5, which is my y1. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and evaluate here. We have 1 minus 2, and so we get negative 1. And then we have 4 minus 5, which is also negative 1. Now, negative 1 over negative 1 is going to simplify to being positive 1. So for this first example, example A, my slope between those two points will be 1. There you go for number 1. All right, let's move on. We're going to do the same exact thing. First step, I'm going to label my x and my y, my x and my y. I'm going to give the first coordinate a 1, the second one 2s. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug into the formula. So I'm going to start here with my y2. So I have my 1 minus my y1, which is 5. So 1 minus 5, all over x2, which is 3, minus 3. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and evaluate here. I get 1 minus 5, which will give me negative 4, all over 0. Now, this is a little bit of a special slope here. This is going to be called an undefined slope. Let's go ahead and write that right now. 
Okay, an undefined slope is going to be a vertical line. It's going to look like this. And again, we'll be able to see that more tomorrow when we're graphing. All right, let's look at C. Let's go ahead and do that one now. So label x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, so we need to make sure that we're watching our signs. I have a y2 is what I'm starting off with. So I have 8 minus a negative 2 all over 6 minus 4. Now, 8 minus negative 2, and we have two negatives, that's going to change to positive. So, I now have 10 over 2. We always want to simplify. So, really, I have my slope is going to be 5. Again, I cannot stress enough how important it is to make sure that you watch your signs. All right, you're going to skip over the u try problems. You'll be doing those tomorrow in class. Go ahead and flip the paper on over. And now, for example two, what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope using a table. Now, in the past, we were able to make our own tables. Um, and now what we're going to do is find the slope when we're given one. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose any two points or any two coordinates on this table. And we're going to do the same thing with our previous formula. So the two points that I'm going to just randomly choose, I'm going to do 0, 7, and 1, 9. All right, so I'm going to write 0, 7, and 1, 9. Now I'm going to do the same exact process that I've been doing earlier around the previous example. So x1, y1, x2, y2. Then I'm going to go ahead and do my subtracting here. So I'm going to have 9 minus 7 all over, doing my x2 right here, 1 minus 0. 9 minus 2, I'm sorry, 9 minus 7 will give me 2. 1 minus 0 will give me 1. So my slope for this example, a, is going to be m equals 2. Now, it's going to be the same regardless of which two coordinates I'm going to choose. So let's look at b here. I'm going to just pick my first two. I'm going to rewrite them, so negative 3, 5, and negative 2, 2. Same exact process. Again, x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to have 2 minus 5, and then I'm going to have negative 2 minus negative 3. See anything different here? Hopefully you notice that double negative sign. Right away I'm going to change those to plus or to a plus sign. So I have 2 minus 5, which will give me negative 3 all over negative 2 plus 3 will give me 1. So here my m, which is also known as my slope, is going to be negative 3. All right, the next two um, examples are you try. So again, you're going to skip over those till t tomorrow. What you're going to do now is please make sure that you fill out this bottom half. Okay, after looking at those examples, you still have questions. There's extra space down here. Write down your questions. Okay, maybe there's a, something that you're still unsure of. Please mark those down as you are working. All right, and we will see you tomorrow during class.